have an unboxing here for a game that was actually released late in 2012 but I had a lot of popularity in 2013 it has just been in limited production and very hard to get I believe the place I usually buy stuff from online when I had it in the shopping cart while I was grabbing other stuff to get free shipping it actually sold out while I was online to get it and I had to get it from another source and they sold out same day also this is a sim this is a cooperative game I don't believe really semi-cooperative but it's all the way cooperative but this is Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island it's supposed to have a high degree of difficulty as far as the game uh, being able to successfully win the game Lots of bad things can happen to you and your options become limited. The box feels nice and sturdy. So we have a Z-Man Games ad here. And they put out some stuff like Pandemic, Or, La or Labora, Merchants and Marauders, Agricola. They don't have the new Uwe Rosenberg thing because Lookout Games was bought by Mayfair, I believe. So Mayfair has the that particular game. But you're going to get your rule book here. So you're going to get an eight, uh, a quick overview of the game. I'll read that out. Robinson Crusoe, Robinson Crusoe is a board game for one to four players in which players take on the role of castaways, exorcists, or adventurers. During each game, players will explore the island, build and fortify a camp, fight beasts, and face many different adventures while trying to survive and achieve their goal, which varies depending on the scenario being played. And you're gonna get a layout of all your components you're gonna get. Looks like you're gonna get a nice setup thing and you can see they have numbers here at each one of these things and all the text on the side here explains what each one of those areas does and those components are up to these look like just piles of stuff that's going to sit next to the board and you got player boards up here you get a description of the objective Looks like you're going to get a breakdown of the player card here. A uh, breakdown of some of the item cards. You're going to go into the different phases of the game, the event, the morale, the action phase, which looks to be fairly long and has lots of different options in it. Looks like the, uh, you have threat, hunting, building, gathering resources, exploration, arranging the camp, and rest, all in the action phase. And this is still in the action phase. These brown areas tend to be clarifications on things to help you do that. And most of this is what to do when planning it. And then you have the actual res resolution of those actions. And that's gonna go on for a few pages. And you have the weather phase, the night phase, and the game ending. Looks like we have some additional rules here. Maybe some clarifications on what happens in particular circumstances. That goes on for about a page and a half. And then you get a symbols and effects area here. A description of the character skills. Looks like some more independent breaking down of terminology and uh, definitions on cards through the rest of these pages. And you have an example of a scenario card and how that breaks down. This happens to be some sort of kidnap scenario, I think. Yeah. And Looks like they're going to have new adventures available on Z-Man. I believe they have one or two already available at ZmanGames.com. And 
on the back page you have a breakdown of all the icons as far as they show up on the cards and gameplay pieces. We're going to get four characters and I believe it is a one to four person game so you can play it solo but it is a four four person game and it looks like we have a male and a female version on each one of these cards I don't believe there's any difference in the actual stats it's just aesthetically so you're going to have a cook to play and he's going to have I think they each have four special abilities that they can play during the game I think during each round they can't play the same ability twice but they may be able to play multiple abilities you have the soldier you have a carpenter and you have an explorer the big difference in these I guess is going to be the health bar and the different abilities that they have So you're also going to have two other supplemental characters that can be played depending on how many players you have friday which is kind of a, a henchman that can play for you and you have the dog which is a uh, like a henchman that can play for you it just has reduced options on what it can do you have these scenario cards here and you're going to have three of these but they're double sided so you're going to get six scenarios all together and you have a cursed island and castaways you have volcano island and Jenny needs help and you have Robinson family and Hannibal cannibal island uh, I believe the one at least one of the ones online is a King Kong themed scenario but this is where it's going to explain what the different tokens and cards that are going to do for each of these scenarios that are specific like these tokens right here are in a pile that can be discovered and they have different effects or benefits depending on the scenario you have this little book token that when that comes up in the game that's going to have different effects depending on the scenario it's going to have other special rules you use and uh Looks like this is some other special stuff. It's going to have some special equipment that's only available to build in that scenario. You can see this one has a couple of different things. You have this little totem piece here that's another icon that comes up. But this will tell you what happens when that item comes up. Same thing here. So you can see just even by looking at the cards, these scenarios look like they're going to be quite a bit different as far as the reaching the goal but the gameplay looks like it'll go pretty much the same we have one two three sheets of token on tokens on the top here and these are going to be the island tiles these hexagonal pieces and they show you what type of terrain it is what type of resource it may gather this is the fact that there's a beast that's going to show up and go into a specific deck of cards for later. These are different, the circles of different items that you'll get randomly. The, there'll be these tokens here where you can get the special symbols to get different things. And they'll be drawn randomly whenever you pull a tile. So like when you pull this tile, you'll draw two of those randomly. And you have the totem icon here that when it comes up, you refer to that scenario card I showed. And it'll tell you what, uh, what uh, the result of uh, that totem is to the scenario. We have, uh, this is placed on a deck of cards. It's a little question mark to determine what happens with that set of cards. So you can see this one here, you have wood and fish or, or wood and food. You're going to get a discovery token. Something's going to happen with a totem and it's a river type. So there's a, a mountain type on this one also and a plains type on this one also. 
Let me have a little more. Say. I'm not sure what token that is. It's a little monsoon looking things. But these are some more discovery tokens. Oh no, these are tokens to determine you can get plus one wood or plus one food on some of these tiles. And these are what you place on the, the tiles to show you that when you grab wood you get or food you get extra from each one of those. These are additional effect tokens, it says. I'm not sure what they do. The skulls. These are determination tokens. This little pattern token here. It's the same on both sides. And those are what let you use your special abilities. As you gain those, the special abilities on your character card, you can use those. These are the discovery tokens that when you turn the tile over, you get some of these. And they're, they have what they are on the this side but on the back they're all the same so you'll be drawing them randomly that's the first sheet we have some more of those additional resource tokens another one of these question mark tokens which goes on another deck of cards to let you know there's a special event there these are reroll success tokens i'm not sure what they do some more determination tokens these colored tokens that kind of have a broken heart on them are special wound tokens. They'll go on your character sheet when something happens to your character and at some point randomly determined later in the game you'll have to resolve their effect. These are more discovery tokens, more island tokens. This is the camp token that shows where your current camp is and you have the one that shows you have an actual shelter and the one that shows you have a campfire. We have some more island tokens here. A weather effect token. And here's another one down here. This is a snow and this is a rain one. I believe they're placed at some point during the game in the weather thing in the weather phase box. And when the weather phase comes around, you have to deal with that. Another question mark that's placed on another deck of cards to show you that. Uh, special events happening on that deck of cards. These are some additional effects tokens. This shows you that when you do an action, you count as having one less player do that action. This is a shortcut token. I'm not sure what it does. We've got some tokens here numbered one to six. I'm not sure what those do. They may go for one of the Scenario cards that may be used on that to mark progress. Some more determination tokens. Some more discovery tokens. This is the first player marker. And those are pretty much the same. The discovery tokens are randomized on the back. The rest of them look like they're... And of course the island tokens are going to be randomized on the back. Except for your starting one. Which is the beach. And it's got a volcano on the back of it. And the first player token is the same on both sides. Have the game game board here. Looks to be a four panel game board. But they are large panels, not square panels. We'll take a look at this. You have your different phases of the game up there. The event, morale, uh, I forget what phase three is. Production, that's where you, the uh, stuff that's on your tile, you'll get the stuff, uh, resources that are on your starter or camp tile. You have the event phase, the weather phase, and the night phase. And then you have the actual phases broken down on the board and they have numbers on them you can see this is the where the card for the event phase is going to go and then you have the morale phase and I'm looking for the number on that but it's right there and then you're going to have the production phase which is going to take place on this part of the board here determined by where your camp is on a particular tile then you have the event phase, or the action phase, where the events show up that you can choose to take care of. 
they call them threat, I believe. And then you'll have, as the game progresses, you'll have a deck of cards here that go here that show the uh, different animals that can be hunted. You have an area where you construct. It's where a deck of cards sits where you construct. Uh, things for your camp. This is an exploration area where when you go out to explore the island there's a deck of cards that... No, my bad. That's not... That's gathering resources. So you're going out into the island. You're not exploring. But you're going to different tiles to pick up the resources off of them. And then you have the exploration action area that uh, you're going to go out and look at tiles that have not been pulled out yet and see what you discover there. And you can see they have a place you can send one or two people. You have to send two people hunting and the card here determines how many people you have to send. But I believe unless you have some sort of effect in place, if you send two people, it automatically happens out there on the board. But if you send one, you take a chance at having to draw a card out of each one of these decks. You have an area here where you can take an action to boost morale in the camp or gain back health. You have the weather and the night phase here, and I believe tokens can go there to affect the weather and the night phase. This large area here is where all the things sit that you're going to be able to invent for your camp, like a cooking pot, a rope, a knife, a shovel, those kinds of things. Your resources are going to sit up here. The resources that you have currently available sit in this lower part. And during the action phase, all those actions take place at the same time. So as you get resources from those actions, they sit up here in the unavailable resources. So as you complete one action, they're not actually available for the next action. And that's just to keep those separated so you don't get confused. And since all the actions take place simultaneously, you don't use... Uh, resources from one completed action to work on the next. Up here you have when you build a camp you have the fact that you can build a camp and then the, how much it costs in resources based on the amount of players. You, the level of your roof on a camp which determines how badly weather affects you based upon the level of your roof and then you have a palisade or a wall or fence if you, that's what you want to call it. And that determines if a creature goes after your camp, how much it can affect it. And you, lastly on the board, you have the level of your weapon. So when you fight a creature, it determines how much damage you do to the creature and how much effect it has on you based upon your level of your weapon. It sounds like there's a lot of stuff going on in the game, but if you've watched some gameplay videos on YouTube, there's a few places that have them. It, it flows pretty simple once you get get it all set up. So you're going to have quite a few decks of cards here. You're going to have four decks of regular size cards and one deck of the mini cards. You're going to have a lot of tokens here. And you're going to get some cubes. The brown ones are your wood resource. The white ones are animal skins and these are all basically going to be used to build your shelters and items the yellow one is food but it's food that perishes at the end of each day so if you don't use it it goes away you have orange which is unperishable food which can stay in your uh, resource thing as long as you want to and it won't perish at all or go away we have wound markers, so these are used on your character card to show your current health. We have the player pawns here, I believe. So the player colors are black, orange, yellow, and blue. So that's one, two, three. So you have some gray pawns there, which are additional pawns. And you have some additional pawns here. The gray ones and then these and this and the thing. And the additional pawns can be uh, 
created through special abilities or by taking certain actions, you can get these pawns, which will allow, allow you to use those pawns to do other actions on the board. But you basically, each character gets two pawns to pick their actions, and then some other things they do might give them extra pawns to use. We have some smaller markers here. And we have, these are just used on the board to cover up spaces or identify what other thing is gonna say. The main thing you use is the black marker to cover up different things on the uh, board that uh, are either ready to use or no longer available to use, depending on what card or space it is. They, uh, so they're, they're really kind of uh, place keepers there to remind you what the state of certain things are. And we have the dice here. So you have four different groups of dice here. You have dice that, remember when I said earlier that you can send one person out to do an action or two people out to do an action? If you only send one person out to do an action or you have some effect that gives you a negative uh, amount of people when you do an action and an example, if you send two people out and there's some sort of game effect that gives you a negative one person, you would, in essence, only have one person for an action. You have to roll these dice to determine the success of the action. And one's a victory dice. This shows you whether or not you succeed. And it has four successes, which are the Vs for victory. And then it has two other little circular plus symbols there, which give you determination tokens. Those are the things that let you use your special abilities. So you get a, a fairly good chance of succeeding a lot. And then you have a wound dice that's gonna show like when you do that particular action, if you're gonna take a wound, again, two blank spaces to show that you don't take a wound, four little broken hearts to show that you will. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you have another dice here, and it's a 50-50 it looks like. Three blank sides, three sides with a question mark. If you roll a question mark, you have to roll, draw out of one of the decks of cards to see what kind of adventure comes up that you have to deal with. So you have dice for building actions, dice for gathering actions, and dice for exploration actions. And then you're going to have your weather dice. And this is a... The white one has more snow effects on it, as, depending on... Uh, which scenario you use, it either may come out or it may come out later in the game. But you can see the number of clouds it has on it is the number of rain you have to prevent or snow you have to prevent. You can see the little snowflake or the raindrops. So if you have a level one roof and you get two clouds, you're only gonna be able to protect yourself from one of those. And then you have the actual just, just rain dice here and it's mostly five sides of it are rain and one side of it is snow. The snow dice, I believe, two sides are rain and the rest are snow. And you have one cloud sides and two clouds. And then you kind of have a, another random piece here that I believe either takes food away from you or breaks. This is like an animal dice where it attacks your camp. It either does three attack and you need your weapon to be three or better it takes some food from you or it hurts your wall a little bit and takes down the level of your palisade. So those are all the components. I'm gonna break open the cards and kind of sort those through and I'll come back and explain those. So I have all the cards open up and I went ahead and put the board back out so I could kind of show a better idea of how the, where the cards are gonna go. So first of all, we'll look at the event cards which is large stack up there and this smaller stack of about six cards and I believe these are the starting cards for each game for each one of the scenarios that come in the game they have a different back to them they're calling these wreckage cards instead of event cards so this is the game that will start off in this spot down here for the first turn of the game and it will give you 
In this case, it just gives you a little story piece here. And then it gives you what you're going to have to put towards this to complete it and what you get when you complete it. So in this case, if you put one one of your character's tokens down there, you get one wood. If you put two character tokens down there, you get two wood. And at the bottom of this, it has the same anatomy to it as the event cards. You can see in this space, it's gonna start out here and as other cards come out, it's gonna move over. And then if it goes off the board, it'll have an event that takes place. And in the case of these wreckage cards, nothing's gonna happen when it moves off the board. So this is a case where all of these are somewhat beneficial to give you some sort of resource at the beginning of the game. So one of those cards will start out there. And I believe starting on the second turn, you'll start to draw a deck of cards. And this is a huge deck, but I wanna say you don't use near all of these in any game you play. You may go through a dozen or so of these cards in a game. So you can see there's lots of replayability in this event deck. But we'll look at the event deck here and see. Normally you're going to have something that immediately takes place. And then you're going to have what you have to do to resolve this event. And what happens if you don't resolve it before it moves off the board. So in, you can see in this case, you're going to get rid of two wood and each player takes a wound. To get rid of this card, you're going to have to take a player put one of his tokens a piece of wood and a piece of animal skin to get rid of this card and then when you get rid of it you'll get a determination token if you let it go off the board you lose a heart but you can see they all have different effects to them this one you'll lose resources on one of the things you'll have to use a weapon and a person and then you can get that resource back if not, you resolve the effect of the card again. So the anatomy of the cards is, is pretty similar in all these events. You have something that's immediately going to happen. What you can have to get rid of that card or resolve its situation. And some sort of resource you might get if you do that. And then you have a, a, a bad effect that will happen if you don't take care of that. You have eight cards here that are starting equipment. I don't believe you start with all of this. You start with some of these items and I think you may be able to get to pick what you start with. But you have a Bible, a storm glass, a pistol, an empty bottle, hammer and nails, biscuits, a flask of rum, and pipe and tobacco. And you see they have these little boxes on here and you'll put a couple little square markers on there, cubes. To show you that you get two uses of that and then this resource is gone. So it's like when you wreck on the island or you land on the island, you have a limited amount of things that you can use. You have a deck of special mystery cards here. And during sometime during the game it'll tell you when when to draw one of these mystery cards, either by pulling out a tile or another card will tell you you need to. But it's either going to be an animal, a treasure, or some sort of trap or misfortune. And what you'll do is you'll draw the card until at the top of the card you get the symbol that you need for uh, to satisfy if it told you you had to get an animal, a treasure, or a trap. So you can see it's things like clothes, maps, backpacks, blankets, bowls for the treasures. Just different items you can get. You can get things like a bite, bit, a gorilla, a beast, a tiger. The uh, some other different things here. A gremlins, a snake, and then for the traps, you got a blade that can hit you, a blowgun, hits you. You're confused and get a strange disease or fall through a trap door, or get grabbed up by a net. These are the cards for the dog and the Friday. See, Friday, see Friday has a lot less wounds. He can only uh, do a limited amount of actions, I believe, but he's not affected by 
any of the bad things that happen, but if you ever have to go on an adventure, if you roll that dice and the question mark comes up, instead of drawing an adventure card, he just takes a wound instead. But he can still build items for you and explore and hunt and do other things. The dog, you get two of these cards for some reason. I don't see any difference between them. And then the dog, he can either help you explore or he can help you hunt. And then you have the different cards here. You have the cards that go in the hunting phase. And to start out with, there won't be any cards here unless the scenario calls you to start with cards. But as you explore the island or go through events, you'll be required to pull one of these cards out without looking at it and place it down. And slowly over time, there'll be more and more animals there to fight. But you get things like an alligator. And it shows you how many wounds you have to do to it. So basically the strength that your weapon has to be up in that corner of the board. If I can get a better shot of that. So you see your weapon strength is recorded on the board. So you'll have to see the strength that your weapon can be, the amount that after you fight it, the strength of your weapon's reduced, how much food you get from killing it, and how much animal skin you get from it. So you can see an alligator or a bear are pretty fierce, birds or hardly anything happens to them. There's not an overly large amount of these. I don't think you're going to be hunting too much in a game. It's kind of just a thing you're going to do on occasion because it's it's very dangerous for your characters and then you have the different decks here where adventures can happen when you either build gather resources or explore and these are all going to be pretty much the same anatomy to them really similar to the event card except there's no effect to happen when it goes off the board so a lot of times these will be shuffled into the event deck up there and they'll come out randomly later and have an effect. This is a positive one where somebody gets determination, but uh, yeah, so in this case, you'll put a plus one wood on the weapon thing. So instead of increasing your weapon strength by one for one wood, you have to spend two wood to increase it by one. So some of them have effects that happen. And then they get shuffled into the event deck. Some of them just get shuffled into the event deck. Some of them may have things that just resolve immediately. But that's pretty much the same method for all three of those cards. Three of those decks. You have a card here that if you play a four player game the uh, you place this out here I believe so maybe two players can take that action I'm not sure it says that I haven't read the rules in depth so I just opened it up so that that this is a car that's used on the board somehow in a four player game and then you have all the items up here that you can build and they'll lay out depending on the scenario uh, a set amount and then a, several random ones but you have things like the shovel and you can see this is the built side, but, or no, this is, so it tells you what type of tile you have to have. So this is a beach, so you can't build this until you've explored part of the beach, which you start with. You can't build this until you explore grasslands. This one, you have to have a hill. This one, you have to have a river. This one, you have to have a mountain. But at the top there, it shows you what you need to have. This one you have to have a river and you have to spend one wood. So it's different things and they give you bonuses at the bottom what those particular things do for you. Some of them are one-time bonuses. Some of them are things you can use over and over again. But that is everything that comes in Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island.